Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Feridon from JesusMinistries.co.uk, and today I wanted to share with you a very significant dream I had a while ago, and I did mention it in one of my sermons, which was relevant a bit at the time. But as I see things happening in the world and things are changing for the worst, really. And particularly I see Christians, although they claim they have their faith in Christ, but I see a lot of them uh, very fearful. So I felt very much compelled to release this video and share with you the dream I had, which is very significant and I think uh, it is relevant to every born again Christian who is a true Christian child of God. Now I would like to go straight to my dream but before that I would like to say a short prayer so uh, the Lord brings into my memory everything so I won't miss anything. Heavenly Father I come before your throne in the Spirit in the Holy of Holies and I ask you to cleanse my, my tongue and wash my whole body Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus Christ, forgive all my sins and give me wisdom and bring into my memory everything that you showed me in my dream and let me not miss a single thing and let me say the right things that you want me to say and also let this video go as far as you want it to go and reach as many people as you want it to reach. So your people will hear what you want to say to them. In Jesus' name I ask you all this. Amen. And when this dream came to me, I know exactly when it was. It was on the Christmas Eve of 2001. It is very significant. And at the time it was very significant to me and I felt like it was very personal to me and I treasured it for so many years. Although I did mention it to my close circle of contacts, my family and friends. And I also mentioned it in one of my sermons, but it's becoming more and more evident that this dream was not just for me. It is for every born again child of God. I just go straight to the dream. I dreamt I was in a very old big cathedral and there was a few people in the church, in the cathedral, that they were chasing after me. Uh, and I ran towards the stairs and I started flying over the stairs kind of floating over them. I wasn't too much higher than the stairs, but I was high enough that people couldn't reach me. They were trying and they were jumping to catch me. And I was, you know, and, and they were, and they were very close to catch me, but they couldn't. And I went up this spiral staircase up to the top floor and there was a window there and then there I went to the window sat on the window and then flew from there to the sky now I went towards the sky towards the stars and in my dream I was thinking I have flown before in my dreams as if I knew I was dreaming. In my dreams I've flown before and, and that is true because I've flown in my dreams quite often and I've hovered and I've you know floated over the surfaces but at one point usually I get tired but in this dream I wasn't getting tired at all and I was going very high and usually when I fly in my dreams I don't go that high but I was flying so high I was almost you know past the atmosphere and in the amongst the stars and 
and suddenly I thought well I've come see it so far I would like to I always wanted to go to the Sun to see what's inside the Sun let's go to that side so I changed direction exactly 90 degree so as I was going up I changed my direction 90 degree towards the Sun I flew a little bit towards the Sun and then after that I didn't have to fly at all I was being drawn to the Sun like a magnet I didn't have to make any effort I didn't have to fly I didn't have to you know make you know <laughs> any effort at all and I was being drawn to the Sun very fast and I was feeling the warmth of the Sun as I was getting closer but I wasn't burning and suddenly I found myself inside the Sun on my knees and inside there there was a brilliant white light there was no floor there was no sky it was just white everything was just white pure brilliant white and I was on my knees but there was no floor there was no ground if you know what I mean and I looked in front of me was Jesus standing I was powerless I was almost like paralyzed and I couldn't move a muscle I knew it was Jesus I looked up to see his face but his face was full of brilliance of light uh, and, and I couldn't see his face his feet I could see and they were like bronze and around his head and the brightness of light was shining like the Sun itself and his hair because of the light I don't know if it was because of the light or if it was, it was just his hair color that was so bright it was almost blonde but you know when the light shines behind you your hair almost becomes white but it, it, I don't know what it was because so much light was shining there and I couldn't stand the the atmosphere was so heavy I, I just couldn't move a muscle I went to stand up in reverence and to respect and say you know hi and respect him but I couldn't and there was no words being communicated between me and him and as I was thinking I need to get up and pay respect and be respectful and, and, and just you know stand up I couldn't do that but he knew that and he laid his right hand and he laid his right hand on my left shoulder by doing that he gave me strength to talk because before that I couldn't even talk I was paralyzed not out of fear it was just the awe the, the atmosphere it was so much that I couldn't withstand it it was almost I was almost like dead and it gave me strength by that and so I could speak and then he said you don't have to meaning you don't have to get up so I said Lord there are people who are chasing after me and he said they can't come here and then I said well it was easy for me to come here anybody else can come here and he said Yes, it is easy for anybody to come here, but if they're after you, to harm you, they'll be burnt. Now, that was the whole dream, as far as I can remember. When I saw Jesus at that time, in my dream, 2001, end of 2001, and like I said, it was a Christmas Eve. At the time, I was 
at my very early stages of Christianity and to be frank I hadn't read that part of Revelation where John actually sees uh, Jesus and he describes him when I read that scripture and found out that John had also seen Jesus and he described him the way he'd seen him and he was almost the same as me he he was powerless he was um, almost as good as dead and the things that he was describing it was just exactly the same as what I saw uh, it was outstanding to me it was just astonishing that I saw exactly what John saw those many thousands of years ago now the significance of this dream was that Jesus was telling me if people are to harm you they'll be burnt on the way yet I wasn't burnt I got into the sun where Jesus was and I was safe there and he laid his hand on me and he gave me power to speak exactly the same as uh, the experience John had in Revelation it was just astonishing uh, after I read the scripture it was many years ago to find out that John had experienced exactly the same as what I experienced now John says he was in the spirit but I wasn't sure whether I was in the spirit or in sleep however the significance of that dream was for me that I was safe and my enemies couldn't hurt me or harm me in any way or shape and to me at the time it was very personal and I took it personal uh, and like I said for many years I didn't say anything to anyone when I did share it I shared it only with uh, the close circle of my family and friends but later on it became more evident that it needs to be shared with all the body of Christ because we as the children of Christ children of God we are safe in his hand although we cannot be complacent we have our own parts to play we have to pray earnestly we see we have to seek his face and we have to ask for forgiveness of our sins and continue to pray but however we have to have this knowledge and this peace of mind that we are safe in his hand and he is in charge and he is sovereign and he will protect his children so I wanted to share this with you that no matter where you are what troubles you're going through what fears you have in your life especially at this time when things are only just going for the worst in almost every country in the world we need to have this assurance that God is with us and he will protect us even if the enemy is an inch away from us now apart from that sense of assurance and that comfort that this dream has given me throughout years and whenever I've been concerned about something serious in my life uh, or I've been fearful of anything this dream has come back to me to my mind and it has given me that sense of assurance and comfort again and so I wanted to convey that to you as brothers and sisters in Christ I think it is very important that you should know that apart from that this dream conveyed a lot more than that to me each part has its own interpretation and I know that and I'm aware of it but I don't want to make this video too long uh, because people don't have the patience these days and um, just to say that there is a lot involved in that you know when you think about it deeply 
you pass the surface of that dream you just think about it the fact that I couldn't even withstand the glory of God it's something that is throughout the scriptures and I believe anybody who has a visitation from the Lord whether it is Jesus himself whether it is God or angels or uh, whoever they may be from above um, they will not be able to withstand the glory I don't think anybody anybody on this planet will be able to stand the glory of God without him strengthening them and so without him strengthening me I couldn't even uh, speak although there was no utterance of words between me and him as such like um, as if we spoke in English or any other language or Hebrews or anything that you can imagine these are all man-made I believe when we go to heaven uh, we won't be speaking in in these terms I think it will be the same as the dream I had we just know we just know what the other person is saying the Lord will know what you're saying or you'll do what you want to say what is in your heart as he always does and we will also know what he's saying without actually hearing physical words I think that is how it's gonna be also the fact that my enemies couldn't get me even being an inch away from me they couldn't actually harm me they couldn't catch me although they weren't that far away my enemies were in the church they weren't from outside the church these are there is a lot involved and um, that I changed direction 90 degrees and that I also believe uh, this is gonna be something probably lots of people are gonna attack me for that mm. jump up and down for this but I believe Jesus himself as in his physical body because also obviously Jesus had a physical body and no one knows where that is I believe Jesus body is in the Sun and I think there is more than that in the Sun I think angels there are angels in the Sun this is my belief now you can disagree you can have your own beliefs or interpretations or whatever uh, but this is my understanding now I don't want to prove uh, what I've seen is actually legitimate and from the Lord but I'm just gonna mention a couple of verses just a couple of passages of scriptures so that you see what I mean Genesis chapter 3 verse 24 it says after he drove the man out he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life now we all know the tree of life is Jesus and he placed cherubim on the east side of the Garden of Eden the Garden of Eden the east side of the Garden of Eden is where the Sun rises and cherubim are angels and a flaming sword he placed a flaming sword as well as angels flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the tree of the way to the tree of life man has tried to go to the moon to Mars and everywhere and they would try the Sun as well if they could but they can't just as in my dream because most of those trying to get to those places they are evil and as Jesus said if they are to harm you they won't be able to get here and it's not a matter of getting there spirit physically it's, it's a matter of spiritual entrance in the salvation so when Jesus says to me it is easy to get here but 
if they're after you to harm you, they won't be able to. It's basically, I think it's talking about salvation. It is easy for people to be saved, but they won't want it. And if they're after you, if they're coming to harm you, using the pretext of salvation, they can't do that. The point I was trying to make by reading this scripture is that the cherubim and the flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the tree of life or the way to the tree of life is the angels and the sun. The radiance and the heat and the sun itself which guards the way to the tree of life so no one can get there by their uh, wits by their human wisdom by their human efforts they can't get there so that's that one verse of scripture I wanted to share with you that confirms what I've seen and also this one uh, passage, passage of scripture from Revelation 1 I start reading from verse 13 all the way to 17 or 18 so it reads Revelation 1 13 and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash around his chest now I also saw him in a white robe as well I forgot to mention that the hair on his head was white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were like blazing fire so you can understand this scripture John is trying to explain that his eyes were like blazing fire and his hair was like wool uh, and I saw the same same thing his hair as I explained was so bright light shining from behind him that his hair was almost white it was so blonde and white um, and his eyes I couldn't see his eyes particularly but whole his his whole face was all bright light and I couldn't see that and he explains that John also explains that in further down in the passage uh, that he he couldn't see that either but he's just trying to give this figurative speech to say his eyes were like blazing fire his feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters now like I explained I couldn't actually hear his voice as in words spoken as we do we the mortals do <laughs> Um, I, I could understand him and he could understand me uh, there was no actual utterance of any words like speaking in you know any man-made language um, but his feet I saw his feet and they were bronze and glowing like glowing in fairness then he continues it says in his right hand he held seven stars and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. That's exactly what I saw. His face was shining like the sun in all its brilliance. And what he's talking about, his mouth was like a sharp double-edged sword coming out of his mouth. But I couldn't see any, anything coming out of his mouth because all his face was just light, bright light and it says that he saw in his right hand he held seven stars but i imagine that he is just trying to say how much light was there how much shining brightness and light was there so in revelation 1 17 he, he continues to explain that when i saw him i fell at his feet as though dead exactly just exactly as i saw him and i was just as good as dead then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and now look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and hate. And again, that was exactly how I saw 
and how I felt. I felt like as though dead. Uh, I couldn't move a muscle and he did place his right hand just as he did to John. Uh, he doesn't say where he laid his hand on, um, but he laid his right hand on my left shoulder. And it's, he says, do not be afraid to him. But to me, he just gave me strength by, by just doing that. And he says, he just gave me strength. I, 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 like I say, it was the same thing. It was the same feeling, do, do not be afraid. And I already knew it was Jesus. He didn't tell me he was the first and the last. So, like I said, I don't want to uh, go into the nitty gritty of the interpretation of the dream, uh, as you can go on and on. And there's a lot involved in this dream, as I said. I could preach a sermon on that, each part of it. There's a lot involved, but the, the objective of this message was to give you assurance and some food for thought uh, if you're from any church or any congregations maybe you can talk about this and share amongst yourselves and, and analyze it into bits and sure go ahead and comment and I will read all the comments I tell you I read all the comments with my wife and uh, we try to answer all the comments as many as we can. I would appreciate if anybody else has anything else that they want to add to this, to uh, complement this or uh, put their own comments. You know, I would appreciate that. Uh, I'm not going <laughs> to delete any uh, comments, even if they are um, attacks uh, I'm not going to delete them I'll leave them and I might answer I might not I might just leave it for other people to answer them now it might be interesting to know that as I was trying to find images to put on this video so it would make more sense to the viewer or the listener and um, I went and typed flying to the sun on the internet and see what pictures I can find so I can put them there. I came across this image which was interesting and I thought this is almost similar to how I saw myself flying towards the sun. And when I read the description it says painting of Icarus flying to close to the sun. Uh, too close to the sun now it's written wrong but anyway um, so I was curious I just thought who is Icarus uh, so I went and searched Icarus in Greek mythology Icarus uh, all these names uh, was the son of the master craftsman Daedalus the creator of the labyrinth Icarus and Daedalus attempted attempt to escape from Crete by means of wings that Daedalus constructed from feathers and wax. Daedalus warns Icarus first of complacency and then of hubris. Now, what's hubris uh, or hybris describes a personality quality of extreme or excessive pride or dangerous overconfidence you see what I'm saying this is very re relevant to my dream and to what I actually um, saw and how I envisioned it all these years I knew the meaning but I didn't know anything about the Greek mythology I had no idea there was such a thing but only just uh, Today, when I went to find the images, I found out about this. So this is not this is all new to me, uh, but it is making my dream even more interesting and more significant that um, Icarus attempts to escape from Crete by means of wings that Daedalus 
constructed from feather and wax. Daedalus warns Icarus first of complacency and then of hybris. Uh, there's two uh, names here, two words here, hubris or hybris. Hubris, or less frequently hybris, describes a personality quality of extreme or excessive pride or dangerous overconfidence. Instructing him to fly neither too low nor too high, lest the sea's dampness clog his wings or the sun's heat melt them. Icarus ignores Daedalus's instructions not to fly too close to the sun, causing the wax in his wings to melt. He tumbles out of the sky, falls into the sea and drowns. The myth gave rise to the to the idiom don't fly too close to the sun which is what i'm suggesting here although we are safe in the hands of the lord but we can't be complacent like just like icarus and we can't be proud and haughty We cannot be complacent just just like Icarus. We cannot be complacent or be proud and overconfident that the Lord is with us. We have a part to play. And that part is our prayers, supplications and petitions, earnest prayers. We have to keep on praying earnestly so we as the body of Christ can be saved physically as well as spiritually we have to fight this battle I have mentioned in my other video that there is a battle going on there is a spiritual battle and we have to fight this battle in this video I'm suggesting again this yes we have to fight this battle spiritually and it's a warfare and we have to be ready uh, in our spiritual gear, in our spiritual um, armor and put on the full armor of God and go to this fight with prayers. We cannot be complacent. We cannot be ignorant and we cannot take things lightly. The main objective of me releasing this dream video now is to give the children of God assurance that the Lord is with you and he will protect you, but you have to do your part. Do not be complacent and do not be proud. Just like Icarus. May the Lord be with you and keep you and your whole entire family as you seek his face in jesus name amen i'll see you again with another video goodbye and god bless